Hey everyone, welcome to the second episode of the Wheels to Walking podcast. Well, actually, more like the 43rd episode of the Wheels to Walking podcast. We have been secretly podcasting for the past year behind a little bit of a paywall on Patreon. And this so is we our ain't way. new to this shit. We ain't new. So this is our way of bringing the podcast public facing so you guys get to get a glimpse into the world of Andrew and I. Yeah, and for those of you who are new to this just to get you up to speed richard is a wheelchair user 10 years ago he's in an accident got us got himself a little spinal cord injury um and i am the producer for the wheels to walking channel i've been podcasting for two and a half years i've done over 200 episodes of podcasts so i ain't new to this shit either yeah so this is a great <laughs> way that we're able to kick off our shoes let our hair down unbutton our buttons and just chill and relax and talk about some of our topics that we would normally not talk about on the regular YouTube But my channel. shoes are on and I don't have any buttons, but my hair is kind of down. Yeah. So let's uh let's talk about our favorite topic, porn. <laughs> <laughs> Which we did talk about on one episode. <laughs> Which we did talk about on another. And it will probably get us canceled one day. Yeah. Uh oh well. Yeah. Um and how many tabs? The type of porn I'm talking about <laughs> is inspiration, inspiration porn. Ah uh, yes. What is the difference between inspiration porn and just you know watching videos about disabled people you know yeah. like, like what's what's the difference and and, and I, what what would you, first of all what do you define as inspiration porn to me inspiration porn is when a person with a disability is is put into a situation that he would normally not be in so that regular able people can applaud him for being special like or being being a better or I think about um, when um, a regular able-bodied person sees uh, a disabled person doing just regular things and then like video recording it or like clapping or like being excited. Like someone will be like pumping their gas in a wheelchair and people will be like, oh my God, you're just so inspirational. It's like, nah, I'm just pumping my gas. Do you think that something, it's like kind of like, uh, for example, could something be inspiration porn to one person that's also, that's not inspiration porn to another? Sure. Or does it always have to be like, think, oh, this is inspiration porn and this is not? Or I think is it about subjective? this. It was like, Florida football team puts in their uh, wheelchair-bound cousin to score the final touchdown of the season. And then they just like hike the ball, give it to the guy in the wheelchair. And, and then, then none of the opponents tackle him. No, and, like, they, and, uh, they just push it, and they just push him down to the end and everyone in the crowd cheers. It's like... It's like the boy with Down syndrome who was the water boy gets in the final game of the basketball game in order to shoot the final hoop, you know, and it's like, yeah, and ever it's, it's all feel good. And the only, the, the benefit is not to the person with the disability necessarily granted in that instance, you just mentioned, maybe the, the guy with down syndrome, his biggest dream was to score the final, you know, thing or to play in a professional game or whatever, who knows? Don't know. But the thing is, is, is the value f going towards the person with the disability or is the value for the viewer as the able-bodied viewer who is getting the feel goods, the feels, so here's, to say. Here's what I think is a good judge. It's inspiration porn if the person with the disability was not the one who filmed it and uploaded it. Like, I think about my boy Pitt. Like, he does pranks on people. Like, one of the most recent pranks he did was that, and this happened just recently, he was um, getting out of a Southwest flight and they like rolled him out in a wheelchair and he pretended to fall on the ground. And and everyone like freaked out and he like started joking and laughing and like all the stewardess was like, oh, I can't believe you did that to us. You got us. That's hilarious. Pitt was the one who uploaded that and put that online and it's got picked up by Complex. It's got picked up by Worldstar. It's got picked up by like Barstool Sports. Like all these big platforms have picked it up and he's the one who who put it up. Gotcha. Then I saw a picture or a video of like a semi truck driver who was a wheelchair user who was just pumping his gas and mm. and and someone else from a car across the, the gas station was filming them and uploading them like, wow, what an inspiration. You know, I, I think I think about sometimes like when I'm in the gym and people come up to me and be like, wow, you're such an inspiration. I can't believe you do it. Like, I don't have any more excuses. And in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm just porn to you. Mm. You know, like it, it's it's whenever you see the disabled person's struggles and then use that as inspiration to yeah. But but I think I think it's not inherently necessarily a bad thing unless you are only using the person's struggle in order to compare your life to their life to make yourself feel better. Yeah, and it's also it's it's not necessarily a bad thing either way because okay, for example, if I do see a guy that's in the gym in a wheelchair 
my brain, even though I'm still ingrained in this world, I still would probably be like, damn, dude, if this guy's getting it in, I don't got any excuses, man. It's like, I, I didn't want to go to the gym, but that guy probably really didn't want to go to the gym and has a legitimate excuse of why he couldn't go to the gym. Or that's even just, the guy pumping the gas. That's just inspiration, though. I yeah. know. That's just inspiration. Exactly. And so I think if I see those things and I internalize it and I'm like inherently inspired, for example, you know, I watch a lot of our, our own videos and I'm inspired by the stuff that you do. But even if it's everyday stuff, I am inspired. But I think where it goes wrong is when you're like outwardly, for example, I know you've talked about this where the lady at the gym like came up to you and was like, oh my gosh, great job. And all you were doing was like lifting weights. It's like, you don't need to go up and acknowledge the fact that you're like, so inspired because at the end of the day it's like that's patronizing i can be driving i can be pumping gas i can be grocery shopping i can be literally doing anything and i don't know i think i think the big thing is i mean porn let's talk about the word porn porn is just like videotaped sex that you put online it's not porn unless it's public right it's just a video that you have between i guess you and it's your a partner. thing and it's also pleasurable in a way that's like not real sort of yeah exactly like porn is like pleasurable in the sense of like ooh, i'm watching this thing that i normally wouldn't get to watch kind of like i even think about like food porn it's like mm. the most intense like drippy cheese or like you know but food porn doesn't involve a person like that's the one thing it's there's almost, no victim per it's se almost dehumanizing us like i would hate that is true because in porn people say it's like you're de it's it's dehumanizing or it's sexualizing a human it's like at the end of the day people in porn are are people too but you don't ever think about their feelings you know like yeah you, you're just viewing them as an object and i think that's when it, like the the bad side of inspiration porn is the objectification of people with disabilities absolutely it's 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 the idea and again it kind of goes back to like who uploaded it right because i'm kind of talking about this in the context of the internet it's it's was there consent involved? Who uploaded it? Like, well, also like, like keep a, in mind, inspiration porn doesn't have to be digital. True, but I think about like a news story probably could be used as inspiration porn or could not be inspiration porn because it's like think about like all the news that Garrison's been on. What's well, because he chased those reporters down and was like, "Hey, you want to do a story on me about me and my foundation?" And and That's then true. and then they'll do a, do a story on it. Um, yeah, I think that the upload thing isn't necessarily a hundred percent rule, but it's a general rule that could that's probably a pretty good indicator. It's like if this person was not consenting to being uploaded against. Yeah, that well, makes sense. This is how I also think about Especially it. Especially if it's like a voyeuristic type of video where you're just like recording a guy in the gym and you're like, "Wow, so inspirational." It's like that dude wasn't asking for that at all. I think about it also too, like if you're in public and you see a disabled person doing something that's impressive, then you can be impressed. Mm -hmm. But if they're doing just living, like if they're just existing in society, that doesn't require an, an a pat on the an, back. An, it doesn't require an applause because that's almost insinuating that we should be miserable, that we should be sad, that we should be this pathetic thing. And a then, lump, and, fat, yeah, unattractive in, the, in a bed. In the moment, like, ooh, look at that person driving. Ooh, look at that person getting groceries. Like, oh, they can live on their own. Oh, my God. He doesn't even have a caretaker pushing him around. Good for them. I literally one time had someone, I was, I was pushing up a hill. I think maybe it was a slight gradient. And someone in their car, like, slowed down and pulled up beside me, rolled down my window, and yelled, Good job! Way to go! Yeah! And then just, like, drove off. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell just happened? Like, I am very confused because if someone else was just walking up a hill or, like, sprinting up a hill, like, would you applaud them? Like, maybe, okay, maybe if you saw a really overweight person, like, out for a run, you might applaud them. But then again, bleh, you might be assuming things about fat people. Yeah. You know, it's the same way that, like, I, uh, again, a very unique perspective here, um, I was not a disabled person before I was a disabled person. Really? No way, right? And I'm sure there would have been a time, if I would have ever interacted with one, where I can imagine myself doing something weird like that and not even knowing it's weird it's like again it's like it's a matter of like education leads to understanding and if people aren't they don't know if you don't know if you don't know 100 percent. you know i think about a lot of times when people like offer me help and i'm like no thank you they almost get offended yeah like, well i want to help you because well, the help I, is really for them to feel good not necessarily because they really want to help you well because uh, because i think at the end of the day it's like if you're 
how do I put this? I don't know. But like people in public and stuff like that, like they want, they see you doing something and they want to feel like a part of or something, or they want to feel their good deed of the day or whatever. Yes. Um, because they're probably thinking like, oh, if I was in his situation, I'd want to get pushed up this hill because that looks like it's difficult or whatever. I think that kind of goes also, and this is getting super meta at this point, um, but also it kind of makes sense is um, able-bodied people are bad at diagnosing wheelchair users. And what I mean by that <laughs> is like, if you look at me, they might diagnose me the same way as if they looked at someone in a hospital wheelchair wearing a cast. Totally. A, a person in a hospital wheelchair who's self-propelling up a hill wearing a cast probably really desperately needs your help. They, they, true. They, they might, they're in a crappy wheelchair. They're in a lot of pain. They just had surgery. They're healing from their Achilles tendon issue. Like they might legitimately actually need your help. And for you to jump out of your car and, and run up to them and be like, yo, let me push you up this they hill. They might be like they internally may, hoping that someone like, would do oh, that. Oh man, thank you so much. That was great. That was amazing. But then like, I'll be pushing up the hill in front of my building right here with a bag of groceries on my lap and people will jump out of their car and run after me and start pushing me up the hills. And I'll be like, do not touch me. Don't touch me. Do not touch me. Go away. And they're like, you don't have to be mean about it. I'm like, you're not helping. You're blocking traffic. Get out. Get out of here. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, fuck out of here. Yeah. I think people are weird just because they, they like want to view themselves as like a good person. Like, I think we have all gone through those internal dialogues of like, if there was a burning building and I saw a cat or something, would I run inside to save it? Or like, if there was a bomb and i knew i could save people would i jump on it or like you know there's like there, the, the railroad track dilemma <clears throat> whatever that that thought yeah is exactly it's like you know if i could save people or if i can do my good deed of the day or if i can be a good citizen in this way because you know the stereotype of like helping an old lady across the street like that's they're like equivalent of mm -hmm. that and it's like they want to help well, the if i ever saw <laughs> i've never seen it like i've never seen an old lady trying to cross the street but when i do i'll be the first to jump out and help yeah, her you when know i see a wheelchair user <laughs> i'm gonna push them up a hill also, it's so funny. Like, I, w I don't think I would help an old lady cross the street unless I really thought she was, like, struggling a ton. Because, like, if she made it all the way to the street corner, what makes you think she can't cross the street? I mean, the same thing applies for the wheelchair <laughs> user. You see me out in public rolling around by myself. Which week? It's like, I got to the grocery store. I unloaded my wheelchair. I did my shopping. I'm getting back into the grocery store with my car. And you try to come help me. Like, I wouldn't have come to the grocery store if I couldn't have been able to get back in my car. Like, yeah. really? But no one thinks of that. And I, my, my thing I always is like, oh, the best help is no help. I always say like, no, thank you. And then some people get insistent. They'll be like, no. And I'm like, I'll also get insistent. I'll be like, do not help me. No, thank you. Yeah. Like, I don't mind when people offer me help. It's when I say, no, thank you. And you do not accept it that I get frustrated. One time, some guy got like kind of yelled at me. He's like, okay, tough guy. Mr. Like do it all yourself. Someone who never needs any help. Okay, then. And like, and then like the door he was holding open for me, he shut. Because I was like, oh, no, thanks, I got it. And then he just shut it to make sure that I opened it up again. And I'm like, I mean, this would have all been avoided if you had just left me alone. Like, why Like, why did you have to involve yourself and then be an asshole about it when I told you no thank you? Yeah. And because and know. making me seem like I'm the tough guy? Like, okay, tough guy. It's like, wait, what just happened here? Like, I'm the bad guy now? Because, I, okay. Well, it's kind of like Chris D'Elia talks about it. It's like when people are put him in an awkward situation, he's like, Oh, I'm not about to get awkward about it. You put us here. Mm -hmm. Like when Pete, I, I can't remember the example that he gave. Do you remember what it was, AJ? It was at a coffee shop. And no, it's happened on multiple occasions. But I remember like someone at a coffee shop was, they were talking to him about like holding the door open, kind of like a similar situation. But like, um, I don't remember the, it was a, it was it was a couple where episodes the, ago. I, th I think I remember the one. It was, it was where um, a guy came up to him. And was like, dude, every time I'm around my friends, like my friends hate you. Like they always talk shit. But I oh yeah. But I'm, all, but I'm always the one who's like, no way, dude, no way. He's awesome. He's great. And he goes, think about what you're saying. And then just walked off. Yeah, it's like, it's like you do re like you you're basically saying that all my friends hate you, but I love you. Or like, oh my girlfriend's such a big fan. I mean, I tell her, like, oh yeah, he's all right, but like she like loves you. And it's like, okay. It's like, thanks for telling me <laughs> that you don't like me. Yeah. It's like a non compliment that they think is a compliment. And you're just like, uh, I'm not about to get awkward. Cause you made this situation awkward. I'm just going to look at you and stare at you. Like the dummy that you're being. I do that a lot of the times whenever I'm like already have a door open and then someone walks through it and then tries to hold the door as I'm already holding it. I'm like, no, I'm holding it. 
and then they'll they'll like awkwardly like reach over me, and I'm like still holding it. I'm like, I got this. No thanks. Like you can go, you can go away now. Thanks. I'm still holding the door. <laughs> you can walk through it. Like I'll. It's yeah. It's interesting. Well, but, it's funny because on TikTok, like we, I posted a video on there about like all the holding the doors holding things. doors thing, yeah. and there was a lot of comments about that. Like, well, people are just trying to help, man. It's like I get it, but it's like what, I get the sentiment, and I think you get the sentiment. And of course, it's like over intentions. the ten years of being a wheelchair user, you have seen it all, so you get it. But people are like, well, maybe they're just trying to be nice. Jeez. And it's like, I saw the one where it's like, well, maybe it. they wanted, they were in a hurry and wanted to be able to get you through the door faster. It's like, I'm faster than you. I promise. Yeah. Like I can zip through a door real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. But kind of, kind of get, but getting, we kind of went off a little rabbit trail there, but like the, the whole inspiration porn thing, I think another thing is kind of like whenever, um, I, I don't like the idea of inclusion when it's, inclusion for the sake of inspiration or like inspiration porn like again i saw it was like some kid he was like a wheelchair user and he was like on the sidelines of like a football team and he was like in a football jersey like wearing the helmets and the pads and stuff <laughs> yeah and there was like it's like this is what inclusion looks like and it's like no that's not because he can't play <laughs> yeah like that's that's just putting the kid in a bad situation what inclusion would look like was yeah. getting involved him involved in a wheelchair football league that would be inclusion you know getting involved in un, some other type of adaptive sport that would be inclusion you know yeah. not not like m making everybody else form to you yeah like like the blind kid playing football yeah it's just cringe it's like <sighs> I think this is a bigger topic of like ability stuff too, just in general. Cause it's like going back to like even like ableism stuff. It's like, there's a reason why ableism quote unquote exists. It's because every, like as opposed to racism, that's just based on skin color and race ableism, there's actual limitations there. You know, it's like you're blind. Like, Football's not your thing. Andrew, it's actually visually impaired. Okay, not everyone is blind. <laughs> Ableist. Okay. Well, if you're a wheelchair <laughs> user and you're trying to play football, <laughs> I'm just trying to say maybe there's another game that we can play. It's kind of like, you know. If you're short, you ain't going to ever make it in the NBA. Exactly, dude. It's like, it's like, well, there's only tall people in the NBA. We need to be more inclusive and bring short people in. It's like, and then remove opportunity and competition. And well, we need to level the playing field because the average person is this height and there's, we're only being represented by tall people. Lower the goal. I mean, isn't Steph Curry pretty small? I mean, short. I don't think he's like short, short. He's not, he's probably taller than me. I literally have no idea. I just remember hearing something that he was shorter than I don't me. know. I mean, they're, uh, granted, I'm giving a dumb example. I, I, I think there was even like a guy, I think Pistol there was like Pete. A, was he, was he, a, he, was, he was an incredible ball handler. He would, he, like, oh, yeah? he would be able to like make people trip over themselves because he was like really good at playing ball. But that was. He, I thought you said he was it, good at handling balls. Yeah, in like the 70s or 80s or some shit like that. I don't even remember. Mm. Um, I love a, I but, love a good, but yeah, you're, you're, you're making a, a point, which is like, even in the disabled community in every subsection and sub genre of disability, each individual person is, is different. Like if we, we can narrow it down. So I'm a, a low level, incomplete paraplegic who uses a manual wheelchair. I'm going to have different abilities. abilities. I will be able to do different things than a quadriplegic complete in a, a manual wheelchair with power assist wheels. Like yes. we have different bodies. That means we have different abilities. Totally. And for them to be like, I mean, there, there's rugby. Rugby exists. It's called quad rugby. It's for quads only. Paras aren't allowed to play. That's ableist. Well, I mean, there's basketball, and basketball is mostly for paras because basketball, in, you know, mean you need your hands to shoot. But in in rugby, all you need is to propel. So they've got quad rugby, and they've got para basketball. People that play those sports, like I remember, I played basketball for a little while. And I'm like, this is lame. I wish I could play rugby. Rugby looks kind of cool. But they're like, nope, gotta be a quad to play. But never once I was like, 
ableist. Like, I, I wish I was a quad. I tell you what, I didn't even know that word existed until YouTube. I started making YouTube videos. Yeah. I literally had uh. no idea. I've been called ableist in so many different ways. I've been called an ableist. I've been called a lateral ableist, which means anyone who's got less abilities than I do, I'm being ableist to. One time, some lady asked me if I could put captions on my videos, and then when I told her I did have captions on my videos, they were just on a different platform. They were on YouTube instead of Facebook. She called me an ableist because some people don't have the ability to change platforms very easily. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I, I think I think honestly, like we will definitely talk about ableism as a whole as another topic. That's a like, huge topic. Because we yeah. can go on for a long time about it. But I think uh, basically at the end of the day, what if able-bodied people are listening and they're trying to avoid view, like, are they like, Oh, well I like watching wheels to walking. Am I, am, am I being inspiration porn? Am I watching inspiration? Porn? Am I being an ableist? Yeah. What, what do you think about like for, for, for people out there that are worried about that? They're just watching you because you're inspiration porn. Like, I think they're probably coming from a good place. Well, first of all, like I had initially mentioned, it's who uploaded it. I'm the one who's uploading it. No, I'm, I am. You're, I'm an able-bodied person. Yes, I'm you kidding. are. <laughs> uploading it. I'm editing it. I'm putting my story out there. And also, my stuff is very educational. I'm educating. If you think about it, new wheelchair users were an able-bodied person a couple of months earlier or a couple of weeks earlier, a couple of days earlier. They, sure. don't, they don't know any better. So those are the people I'm educating. I'm also educating people that are able-bodied. You even told me before. He's like, dude, if I ever get a spinal cord injury, which is I hopefully don't, but if for some crazy reason in my life I do, I'm going to be the most prepared spinal cord injury dude ever Literally. Be because I know just about everything and I've been exposed to just about everyone with different and I already levels. Know, I'm like part of a community kind of. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, I think, I don't think if you're watching my videos, you don't have to worry. I think if you're watching most people's videos, you don't have to worry. Yeah. Especially if you're doing it to learn, because again, I go back to understanding through education, like the only way to understand. I mean, I think about how open minded I am to like the LGBTQ movement and people who are LGBTQ plus and Without the internet, I wouldn't be able to do that. With, totally. Without looking at at people's Instagram stories and without watching YouTube videos and without reading captions and and being let into that secret world totally. that not a lot of people know about, I I then get to go, oh, they're just like me, but they just like having sex with other people. It's an empathy machine. You know, dude. it's literally it's like, oh, why do I care like but i used exactly. to I, there was a time when i was very uncomfortable around gay dudes i was like oh no they're hitting on me like they're gonna want to like do things to me i mean obviously this was oh, i was probably like 16 17 18 i don't yeah. know now do gay dudes are like my favorite people in the world because gay dudes love me and they're always like hitting on me and talking to me and flirting with me and i'll flirt back and i'll whenever they're like are you single you got a you got a girlfriend what's your number i'll be like oh i'm so sorry but like thank you that's such a great compliment and then we're friends. We're buddies. Like I've got plenty of gay dudes that are friends. And, and, and it's just because I'm like, I don't care what you do with your penis. Like, I like, what does that have to do with me? That has nothing to do with me. That's but true. But before I used to think it had a lot to do with me and very similar to like a defining feature of a gay dude is, Oh, he has sex with other guys, but who he is as a person, dude, so much more. Yeah, of course. You know, I think about like, same thing with me. It's like, I'm a person with a disability. I use a wheelchair. My wheelchair is a big part of what makes me different from you, but that's not who I am, you know? And you've got tons of other things that people would be interested in too, if they didn't even know about the wheelchair. Yeah. And, and that's another weird thing that that's come out of this, um, disability is that, or, or living, living as a, how do I, how do I put it? So like, I'm a cis white male, right? Like, <laughs> like I'm a cisgendered white male. I'm like the epitome of privilege, right? However, sure. however, exactly. However, I live um, as a person with a dis disability, which means I'm a, I'm a, part a minority, of, I'm a part of a minority group. And, a, and most importantly, a marginalized group, a heavily marginalized minority. And, um, even within my group, I'm marginalized. Even within my group, I, I am, I am sectioned off into a little corner in the same way that happens in the LGBT, LGBTQ plus, you know, it's, it's very much like, I have become very empathetic and very open-minded even to like other disabilities. Like I didn't realize there was some disabilities that I was like, Ooh, get away, you know, but, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, 
I was once a able-bodied person. I did and probably still do have some internalized ableism within me in some way. Like, I don't even know. I'm still figuring it out. You know, in the same way that when I, I didn't realize I was a low-key racist until I moved to Atlanta and then I like, put around a lot of black people I wasn't used to being around. And I'm like, oh, shit, I think I might be a little bit racist. Mm. But I, I, did, I didn't think I was because I'd, I'd, I'd been – exposed to black people i had black friends i i it wasn't new to me i didn't think yeah. i was racist but then i just found myself getting really uncomfortable and i'm like oh no it's only that's the only difference huh i was like shit you know and then same thing being in atlanta again we got lots of gay folks around here and the same thing like the more and more i'm exposed to it i was like oh i think i might be a little bit homophobic didn't realize it but now that i realize hey, it, but at least admitting it is like the is like the best thing yeah and then same thing with like so before I was disabled, I probably had some ableism within me. After I got disabled, honestly, more, to be honest, because when I was put around people that I deemed, quote unquote, losers, I didn't want to be around them. So I was kind of like, Ugh. you know, I had the privilege, and I say that in air quotes, of being able to be fully independent quickly. So I used to look down upon people that were dependent for longer. Why? Don't know, you know, like it's, it's very much. So it's like, as I, as I grow, I think about like, even in my airport video, when I'm talking about the transporters, I'm like, yeah, they're usually for old people or fat people, but no, they're not. They're for a lot of different people, but that, yeah, but that's just what I thought. You know, I think about like in my very first video, I talked about like being wheelchair bound and, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's not language I like, but it was just deeply rooted in my head that that's just what came out. Mm. You know, so like I'm learning a lot about myself. Yeah, you're like, this is blah, blah, blah for people who are permanently bound. Yeah. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, not all of us are permanently bound. I guess when you said not all of us are permanently bound, I guess it means like literally not all of us, like none of us are permanently bound. Well, I mean, but then if you look at like, I know a guy named Cruz who will laugh in your face and he'd be like, I'm permanently bound. He's like, I literally have straps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he's, he's he, not super glued in there. He gets off to go to the toilet and stuff. Yeah. He's a high level quad who I think operates on a sip and puff. Um, but he like, he's, he's a very qualified and accomplished human being. And I love texting with him because I know he's using Siri and like a, and a stick in his mouth, you know, and like predict, <laughs> like predict to text. Like I know he's like a speedy texter. I'm like, I literally asked him, I was like, yo, how you typing so fast? He's like, Siri is my homie. And then I use my bite stick to like change the corrections or whatever. I'm like, ah, Cruz, what up? You know? Um, but he's like, it's cool. You know, I think about like, sometimes people get offended at the term, like in a wheelchair, you know, instead of on a wheelchair, on, in a wheelchair, on a wheelchair, wheelchair user, it's just language. You know, I think about remember when I did my handicap parking video and everyone got mad because handicap word is offensive. It's called disabled parking. And someone else is like, no, it's not called disabled parking anymore. It's called accessible parking. And it's like this whole shit show going back and forth. And it's like I intentionally called it handicap parking because at, when I was doing keyword research, accessible parking and disabled parking had no one searching for that. But people were searching for handicap parking. So therefore, I found a search term people were searching for and made the video around that. Well, also, I think a lot of the people commenting about the disabled parking were from the UK and stuff like that too. Where that where that term is actually because handicap is like offensive there. Mm -hmm. It'd be like the same as using like cripple or something. Yeah, but that's just Maybe. like that's like that yeah. cripple is kind of like a you know. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Again, it's like, it's like but in, that's like, here. Like but, in, but over there, maybe invalid, handicap is yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's let's change topics a little bit because I think we, I feel like we beat this horse to death a little bit. No, um, we talked about like five topics. <laughs> yeah, we really did. <laughs> Talked about too many. We'll have to do a deep dive. Like we're gonna have ep more episodes in the future. We're gonna dive more into that. No, stuff. we're stopping after this episode. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next topic is the new rules of YouTube. Well, yeah, and and also I don't how know if you've seen this and, and how we're also gonna have to figure out how to navigate that because well uh, the uh, the thing is that I think with with us we've got. Uh, a pretty like squeaky clean image on like the wheels to walking side of things like the main channel mm -hmm. but this new podcast side like we're swearing a we little bit i mean we intentionally put this on a separate channel because we didn't want it to accidentally mess up our main, our, our main channel and get yeah. like a mature rating i mean i've already said fuck like you know what i mean like yeah i've already said fuck too fuck <gasps> Fuck, I said fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the fourth fuck strike. You're <gasps> you struck out. I didn't know there was a fuck strike. I think there's a strike. I think it's in the first ten minutes. Something like that. Yeah, so if we kinda like intentionally don't curse for the first like ten minutes or something. I thought it was like the first two. I don't I don't, whatever. I don't fucking know. <laughs> now we're just going <laughs> overboard. <laughs> that was so <laughs> Okay. Okay, so so um I'm re I'm reading this article from Vox. It says six months after a major public controversy, YouTube is changing its anti harassment policies. Well, that was first the COPPA. Well that's that's to do with kids. 
Exactly, but th- but what was the? It was because pedophiles were leaving timestamps in the comments. Well, about- this is not what we're talking about. This is anti harassment. So this is uh mainly the topic is David Crowder uh and that one oh, gay dude from Vox. Okay, yeah. So maybe I shouldn't be reading the article from Vox because the gay dude was from Vox. But either Bias. way, here we go. YouTube announced on Wednesday, uh, which is today that it's making long-awaited changes to its harassment policy, saying it will tighten rules around what's considered a threat and toughen punishments for repeat offenders. For years, the platform has faced intense scrutiny from critics, including its own employees, which who say it's allowed hate speech and harassment to flourish, particularly with comments that target racial minorities, women, LGBTQ individuals, and other historically marginalized groups. Wow, ties right into our topic. Uh, controversies around YouTube policies hit a high point in June after Vox Media journalist Carlos Maza called public attention to the repeated harassment he was receiving from conservative YouTuber commentator Steven Crowder. And over the course of two years, Crowder routinely used racial and homophobic slurs in his widely watched videos, attempting to debunk Maza's work. So basically... Steven Crowder is the prove me wrong meme guy. Yeah, it's uh, he sits on college campuses and says, blah, 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 change my mind. Well, what's really interesting about that, I'm just going to throw my two cents on top of that. Um, he is a seasoned debater talking to like freshmen and sophomore. Yeah, those videos are kind of weak. Like, but they're funny. Yeah, they're funny, but it's weak sauce, dude. It's so like... He's going to a college campus where it's like, okay... Fish in a barrel. Like, yeah. You, yeah, it's stupid. Yeah. And the thing is, is basically the controversy around that was... Is it a joke? Is it a is it hate speech if it's a joke? Is it, you know, like there was a lot of controversial things. And the problem is now is now that they've updated these new terms of service where they're they're cracking down on quote unquote hate speech or bullying or whatever, videos from the past are being taken down. And this kind of goes back to this. This is the debate that I kind of really want to talk about is is it fair for YouTube to pr- retroactively delete videos that were within terms of service at one point, but now they're not. For example, to bring this into the real world, is it fair to keep people in jail that are like in jail for marijuana charges when marijuana is now legal in the state? Should we like free those people or should we like keep them in jail? Cause like, Oh, well they were breaking the law and they knew they were breaking the law at the time, but it's like, yeah, but now we've agreed that this law is stupid. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's this weird debate where on YouTube, I feel like almost at some point, I, I think if you're in terms of service when your video is launched, it's not really fair to like take it down after the fact if you just, oh, we changed our rules, can't have this anymore. Yeah, I mean, I think about, um, like, we can talk about the mar- marijuana thing again. Uh, there was a lot of like YouTube channels pre-adpocalypse that were like cannabis lifestyle channels they were all about growing and smoking and you know reviews of dispensaries and how to get your medical card and like all this stuff that they were legal within their state and then adpocalypse came along and then all of a sudden like drug use is demonetized and it's like (coughs) but then what if it what happens when it becomes federal when it's federally legal, do you re-monetize those videos? Well, the other question is... Like, what What? what the, like what then? YouTube is the second most trafficked site in the entire world. Second. This has nothing to do mm-hmm. with, with fucking uh, America. But let's be honest, they are an American company that mostly police American content creators. This is true. But that's also part of the problem. It's like Instagram. Like if you if you find I don't you you've told me but <laughs> some if, Russian if you con- find if you content. find if you find like Russian accounts or like Arab accounts, you can find straight up porn, straight porn, and they don't they don't care. Yeah, because it's because re- it's Russian because and it's not going to make headlines in America where they're based. So who cares? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 wild. But I I think. Um, do you I, think that I'm, they should be able to take them down? Because the because the argument is they're still serving those videos, so they're still on their platform. But uh, I am tired of YouTube acting like a parent. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just I'm just tired of YouTube daddy. I'm I'm tired of them putting up invisible electric fences and letting, paternalism and letting us run into those things, and then we get shocked, and then we have to go run around and be like, hey everybody, don't run over to that corner right there, and don't get shocked. You know, you know, don't. Yeah, it's 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 very much like. Ugh. I don't know, man. I, I just, it's same thing with like fucking Twitter and Facebook and private companies are allowed to do whatever they want to do. That's fine. That's their prerogative. And what they want to do is they bow to the dollar period. The end of story. Advertisers are always at the forefront of this and the advertisers, whether they're on or off the platform is what's making the rules, but it's, I'm, I'm just tired of it. You know, I, I like, I worry about, like, let's say, for example, um, like, 
in the future. You're not allowed to show like disabled people getting injured. And then all of a sudden my WCMX video gets yanked because I crash on my wheelchair. I mean, yeah. we, we experienced that on TikTok where you uploaded a video on TikTok. And, it was the same video as you they, crashing on your wheelchair in the WC Mike's video. Didn't you get a strike that was like, hey, this is bullying and harassment. And you were like, no, this is me. Yeah, it literally said this video has not been a... Pr TikTok is pretty strict on that stuff, actually. I saw someone doing cliff a cliff jump. And at the very bottom, there was a disclaimer that was like, actions, this is a action, dangerous. Actions, in, actions in this video can cause serious and permanent damage or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they do that. Mm -hmm. Which, honestly, I think they're on top of their game preemptively on a lot of this stuff because they're seeing what's going down on a lot of these other platforms and they're just trying to be proactive. And it's like, I understand, I get it. It's like, it's like we can choose from yeah. the get. The thing that's frustrating about YouTube is it used to be the wild, wild west. And so a lot of these creators that have flourished for so long are now like getting demonetized or getting their stuff taken down. And it's like, yo, what the fuck? This is my job, dude. Well, we just watched the podcast with Nerd City and Wang. And Did you watch it? Yeah. And they were, good. Yeah. With No Jumper. And they were mm -hmm. talking all about like the insanity that like some of their stuff gets monetized, but some of their stuff like Wang has a video called Cumbox. And, and the way he got around it is he spelled cumbox as one word and not two words. Not C-U-M space box. It was like cumbox. Yeah. And he's like, he got... or cum, Was it cumbox or cum jar? It was a Reddit cumbox. Yeah. Um, and then... <laughs> and then it was... This is so funny. I know, crazy. It's one of his most popular and, videos. And he, and he said for three or four days he was green and then it went yellow and then he appealed it and it went green again. Like someone reviewed it and was like, oh, this is fine. Well, that's the hard thing about Adam 22 as well. He's talked about it on that episode with no jumper. Like he'll upload stuff as unlisted and, and like basically try to try to like see if it'll like get flagged or not. And then as soon as it goes public, it's, it gets flagged anyways. So sometimes he'll like, he'll literally do stuff on purpose just to get it flagged on purpose. So then he can appeal it immediately rather than like waiting until like the, maybe it'll get unlisted. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll get demonetized. Maybe it won't. He's like, no, I'm going to like say fuck right at the beginning just so I can like appeal it and like force the system rather than like waiting Wait. on YouTube's weird wacky system that may or may not pick up on I mean, I whether think, it gets demonetized I, I, I or mean, not. I think about like kids channels, right? Like due to the actions of people that were not like, it was just some creepy pedophiles in the comments. Like it's not, it's not the channel's job to like monitor police their comments, po police the comments. And then, so what does YouTube do? They freak out. They remove all comments on all kids videos and remove all monetization on all, all videos because the FCC came in and find everybody. So if you're a kid's channel, even a really successful, successful kid's channel, Yes, you fucked. You screwed. Well, those Bye. are kind of like two separate controversies that, that happen to like coincide too. Cause, but it, it hit only kids. It hit only kids content because, yeah. and that's the funniest part is for so, for the past few years after the initial adpocalypse, if you guys don't know, is basically this period of time where a lot of advertisers pulled out of YouTube because their ads were being shown on videos that were depicting things that they didn't like or didn't approve of necessarily. It's like when Coca-Cola got on top of a Nazi video. Yeah. Or and it's like, yo, YouTube, what the heck? Why are you showing our, vi our ads on top of, of on top of yeah, Nazi Proc propaganda? Procter and Gamble got an ad on like an ISIS video. Like there was a whole There's bunch something. of something. You got to be searching that kind of weird stuff to even know that that's happening. But the, the, at the end of the day, a lot of advertisers pulled out. And so again, YouTube bowing to the mighty dollar, which you can't fault them for, honestly. Their they're a business. business the but the problem is is like these with with the with this new controversy with the kids stuff it's like there was there's this pedophilia problem i get it you know maybe banning the comments for a for a little bit for a period of time is like a temporary solution hopefully that gets lifted soon but now with this coppa thing it's like it was because youtube was storing data on children so that they could advertise to them more effectively which is what they just do I mean, but that was that was a, one of those like they knew they were breaking the law type of things. I think they knew they were breaking the law type of thing, but it's like these kids are on the platform. They make a separate app called YouTube Kids for a reason. Like kids shouldn't be on the platform. Again, it like kind of boils down to like, yeah, they're tracking them, but like they weren't. I don't know. They were they were not tracking YouTube Kids accounts that were specifically watched by kids through the youtube kids videos they were tracking kids that were using adult accounts so there was no way for them to know that they were kids because the account was set up as if they were not kids yeah exactly and i'm sure the metadata could tell them like oh this is a kid like even though the account says it's that he's 25 it, this is obviously obviously a kid. a kid yeah which i understand that but at the end of the day i think 
that whole system is weird too. I think, but it all goes down. If you're to, tracking to data whole, on everyone, you should be able to track data on everyone. But I don't can, think if if you're a kid or not, like who cares? But the adpocalypse, the COPPA, the bullying thing, kind of to me goes down to what we were kind of talking about in a previous episode, which is like we can learn from other people's mistakes. Is diversify your income streams. A hundred percent. Get emails. Have your own products. Work with brands and sponsors that you align with, you know, find a way to, to thrive in a space. So you don't rely, you know, my Facebook following belongs to Mark Zuckerberg. My Instagram following belongs to Mark Zuckerberg. YouTube subscribers belong to YouTube and Google. My email list belongs to me. So I also think about like merchandise that belongs to us, you know, whether, you know, th not um, like ads that are on the platform, not like even working with sponsors. Like I'm still really hesitant, especially to like work with sponsors because there's a, there's a part of me that's like creative autonomy is very important to me. And I don't want some sponsor to, to get their panties in a bundle about something I said, like here on this podcast, for example, even though the wheels to walking channel is squeaky clean, something I say here, because I, I, I don't want there to be like someone holding my money hostage be like, well, I'm not going to pay you because you said this. And it's like, dude, we gave you a minute and a half shout out on a video. You have to pay us. We already did what we said. Well, no, we just don't agree with, you know, we don't agree with that. And it's like, what what what's I going on I think at here? the end of the day, it just boils down to us being crystal clear on what we're offering. It's like we are not offering a brand, you know, ambassador. We're not being in brand ambassadors. We're literally giving you ad space within our video to read an ad. That's it. Like mm -hmm. you get the listeners, unless you there's get a, the unless audience. there's like a proper collaboration. But even still, it's like, dude, yeah, dude, you're you're not you're not like well, I think you're not controlling this content. Now that we've got this podcast out there, and you know, people are going to be able to listen. I think. Honestly, the again, the podcast for everyone out there, it's kind of like our mainstream play. It's not necessarily just geared towards wheelchair users, even though we talk about wheelchair stuff a lot. Um, the sponsors here are not going to be the same sponsors as, as we would find on the YouTube channel. Exactly. Different, very and, different. And that's what I think is going to be exciting because obviously Call Her Daddy has sponsors. Impulsive has sponsors. Joe Rogan has sponsors. Chris D'Elia has sponsors. There's plenty H3. of companies that don't mind working with 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 podcasts that are not afraid to speak their mind and be a little bit raunchy or whatever, because I mean, if I, again, I think about call her daddy. <laughs> I think their podcast is hilarious. I've been listening to it for a little while now, but they talk about some stuff on there. That's like, dude, if I was a brand, like I'd be a little bit worried too, but there's some really cool brands on there that like don't care. And they realize that the people that are into raunchy humor are just normal people, dude. Like people that are in, you know, people that they are watching H three, they got money too. They're mm -hmm. buying, you know, whatever. They're buying all kinds of stuff, and I think really, um, I think that that's why podcasts are so attractive to people. It's because it's a lot of times that like unfiltered look in a world of so much like, you know, you watch the news, everyone's talking in a fake voice, like, "All right, so back to you, Jonathan." I mean, a prime example is Logan Paul vlogs. Refuse to watch him. Really obnoxious. Logan Paul on his podcast, different person. Because he's totally. he's not he's, he's not, not playing up a character. He's, he's not, being himself. Yeah, he's just because it's really hard Logan. to play up a character for an hour long conversation. It's very hard mm -hmm. to be a character unless it's like a fiction podcast or something. And I think in a podcast like this, it's very hard to not be yourself after a while. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's definitely um, a situation where like authenticity will prevail. You know, I I'm not worried 100%. about it in any in any way, shape, or form because um, the 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 people that get it, get it. And the people that don't, we don't have to convince. True. And, and if they do change their mind later down the road, then like, okay, they can, they can talk to do us. Do you think that it. these new bullying rules are going to affect us in any way? I mean, how? Yeah, exactly. I don't think they would, which is, do you think? I mean, you're helping people. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think, I think, but the thing is, is who's to say what's like hate speech or whatever, because like maybe in some of our videos, like you said, there's been like certain things you've said, like, 
against other people or whatever. Well, like, yeah, I mean, it's the idea of like who's to say like if someone flags it and is like this is hate speech towards me, and you, is YouTube going to be like no, it's not? Or are they going to be like oh well, if he says it's hate speech towards him, I guess it is. Well, I mean, that kind of goes back to the to the ableism thing, sort of, where it's like there for sure are other wheelchair users that have probably reported my videos, but it's like you know why? Because no one in your life has called you out. I can call you out. I can call you out because I've been in your shoes and I'm also a wheelchair user. You're not immune to criticism. I'm about to criticize you hard. I'm not going to criticize you directly, but I will criticize you. And, you know, the lack of criticism, I think, was a potential big part of how I even fell down into a rabbit hole of addiction was like no one questioned, criti questioned or criticized me for being high 24 7 because the because the doctors gave it to him you know oh he needs it oh it's, it's normal to not shower for three to five days and it's normal to be a little bit stinky and you know it's normal to like isolate and like you know get fired from your job for not showing up and i'm like no one ever called me out no one criticized me because they they felt like they couldn't and i think that needs to stop i think people with disabilities don't all of a sudden get a magic pass to do whatever they want to do. You, they can still be criticized. But I think it's also in part a like a responsibility of other people with disabilities to call them out too. It's like, you know, yeah, it sucks that your life happened this way, but that doesn't give you the right to be angry at people, to yell at people, to be rude to people, to act entitled. That doesn't, you don't just automatically get to be a crap human being just because the world isn't fair and it didn't treat you fairly. Like that's, that's inexcusable. But a lot of the times people will just give them, give other people a pass. Cause it's like, Oh, they're just going through a lot. It's like, yeah, they are. But that doesn't mean that they're allowed to be an asshole. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. I think I heard a Will Smith quote that was like, it's not your fault what happened to you, but it's your responsibility to get out of it. It's like, it's not your fault that you were born into, you know, poverty. It wasn't your fault that you had an abusive father. It's not your fault that you, you know, had this terrible accident happen to you, but it's your responsibility to figure your shit out and like get it, get your life back together and, and, you know, come to terms with it, go to therapy, whatever you got to do to like get your life back in order and get to some sort of like quote unquote normalcy. Yeah. I think there's a lot of uh, codependency and coddling with inside of families. Um, totally, with, totally. With, with especially I'll, I'll i'll talk to spinal cord injury people it's like if, if you if you're a spinal cord injury and people do you are dependent on people and people do have to take care of you for a little while and and it is necessary for you to have some type of dependence but then it gets to the point where it's like that you become co-dependent it, totally. be, it becomes the part where like everyone treats you with like white gloves and and you know, like this, this like, oh, he's fragile. You know, it's yeah. all, all, all this, all this nonsense. It's like, well, he's too afraid to drive, so I'll just drive him everywhere. No, take the bus. Oh well, he doesn't know how to cook very well, so I just cook for him. And like, laundry's hard. I'll just, I'll just keep doing his laundry for him. No, no, no. It's enabling. Yeah, it's enabling. It's, 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 that's messed up. I mean, I, there's a lot of. And it's not really anyone's fault, I guess. Yeah, exactly. It's not necessarily anyone's fault. It's just it, it, you just it, got to figure your shit it's out. It's like the 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 parental figure. It's not always the parent. It might be a brother or a sister, but the parental figure wants to love and take care of, and and the person who is hurt doesn't know that they can do it on their own because they've never tried or someone's always been there to help them. Mm, yeah, and it's not necessarily anybody's fault. But again, that kind of goes back to the like what we talked about in the last podcast is like. Why am I controversial for saying stuff like that? Yeah, makes sense. Because the people that get offended and pissed off are the people that are either coddling and white gloving or the people that are being pampered and think like that's the only option for them. Yeah, makes sense. Um, this is the time where we're going to do a little bit of Q&A. We got like 10 minutes left, 12 minutes left. This is kind of a big question, but it's a question that, because uh, we basically before this, we're like, oh, what questions should we ask today? And me, AJ and I both have, I think a lot of times this is asked to your friends as, as, as opposed to just people asking you directly. Most people don't ask me this question directly, but they ask other people that are close to me. Totally. And that would be questions around sex. And I've even had, um, we, we've talked about this in, in Wheels to Walking videos, but like one of the biggest questions is like, People um, initially are like, oh, from the waist down, his shit don't work. So, like, does it involve his dick? Can he, you know, can he have sex? Can, you know, like, that's because I think that's, like, the end goal for a lot of guys, too. They're like, must get girlfriend, must have wife, must 
procreate. It's, I mean, it's literally ingrained into our DNA to like procreate and have children and all that. So it's on the forefront of a lot of people's minds when they think about that. Cause they're like, Oh, legs. Oh, dick too. Oh shit. Like, can he have sex? So I guess the question would be, can you have sex? And I guess that's kind of the big elephant in the room. A lot of people that are maybe just discovering the wheels to walk and show for the first time are going to go back to the initial episodes and work their way through. Probably that's what I, I tend I, to do. I hope so. That'd be so cool, this yeah. is probably one of those big questions that people are asking. So I guess in 10 minutes, <laughs> just riff on that as much as you can. Yeah, I can do that. Um, so the big question is, can you have sex? What they're actually asking is, can you have sex like me? And have sex like me means get an erection on your own and be able to ejaculate. That's what that means. That's what they're asking. They're asking, can you get hard and and can you feel it and can you come? Oh yeah, or if you get or if you can feel it, is it fun? Like, is it pleasurable? Maybe you can yeah. like actually squirt some cum, but like, does it feel good? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're just asking. Yeah. Is like, can yeah. you can you do it like me or can you do it like you used to? And and you know, some guys can orgasms, some guys can't. Some orgasm without any fluids coming out. Some orgasm with with fluids coming out. It just it just depends. Um, some can get hard on their own. Some can get hard with pills. Uh, some can get hard with injections. Um, and then you know, you got to remember that. Um, sex isn't always a one-way street. It's a two-way street. And then you shouldn't be so lost in yourself. You need to be lost in the other. So you also have a mouth that works and you also have hands that work. Um, and you also have like pillows you can use and, you know, different swings you can use. And, you know, it's not just like, okay, cool. I'm going to have sex. Let me like inject my penis with a boner injection. And then let me just lay on my back and then like, you know, a girl's just going to ride me like that would just not be cool. Like, that yeah, would, that yeah. would be, that'd be kind of lame, but it's like, um, so when you say, when, when people ask you, can you have sex like me? The answer would be kind of no. Cause you exactly. You, I mean, they're, but they're, what, they're, but they're what can you do and what do you do? Like in I'm, your experience, cause I mean, everyone's different. Yeah. So, um, for me, I found out that I could orgasm if I, um, played with my nipples. I learned, how'd you figure that out? Um, I don't know, honestly. I think, I mean, I had my nipples pierced a couple of times and I always liked, you know, like. I didn't even know that. Yeah, this is like my, th I had it twice or three times. But You I, know what's funny is I, I could totally see with your nipples pierced. Yeah. It's like <laughs> my, 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 my nips gains, just curl and doing curls. Um, but yeah, that was always just because I I was like a little weird and I just liked having nipple piercings. So I like showing them off to people, you know, like, and, and when people would touch them, I'd be like, ooh, that feels nice, you know. Um, but those are like endogenous zones or something uh, like that? erogenous erogenous um you can also like neck is an erogenous zone ears um some people like their 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 like uh, hips or like the top of their legs um touched yeah um i also so i found i could do that i also personally like the injections just because they're they're quick they're painless and they're quick what I, is the specific thing that you take for people called, out it's there called, it's called trimix Trimix. Uh, Trimix. And you basically take a little hypodermic needle that's like the same kind that you would shoot insulin into your body. It's very, very, very small. And you shoot it into like the base of your base. Well, yeah. Base so of your so penis. you've got two caverns that like fill with blood and you just put it into one of those caverns. The caverns are connected. And it basically just like the chemical like causes those caverns to fill with blood. Um, vers caverns. Versus if you take like These a pill. Huge. If, if you take a pill then you got to wait like 30 minutes to an hour and there's no better way for your girl to lose her mood than it is to, to like wait 30 minutes or an hour. <laughs> you got to time that shit. Yeah. You also have to pretty much do it on an empty stomach. So you can't do it after dinner and like everyone loves, you know, dinner and going home and watching a movie and hooking up. Like that's just like what people usually do. Yeah. Um, and then, um, I'm also, you know, I don't want to spill too many beans with anybody but like um you know my hands my mouth um toys you know any, yeah. any anything to like make her happy because i do understand that i'm i guess quote unquote deficient um that's ableist relative to a, like guys i mean i think about it sometimes i'm like man i wish i could still smash the way i used to like i was really good at it like you know i like <laughs> you know i had like i had like stamina i had like endurance you know i was i was you know strong you know like there was there was Stamina, man, with the blam, with the <laughs> uh, you liking the stamina? You know, and I can't, I can't do it that way anymore. But I've got someone who I love, and someone who loves me, and we care about each other, and um, it's made me a great communicator, and um, it's made me be, I think, a less selfish person in the bedroom. I think a lot of guys are naturally like, oh, when I'm done, it's done, but um, that's that's not the truth. It's it's definitely like a a two way street. It's a two way street, and it's not always like 
one for one. Like we can just keep, yeah. keep going. We can have fun. And since I'm, most people have what, like cowgirl missionary doggy and that's it. Baby blowjob, you know, like, <laughs> like th that's, that's kind of like what most people's like sex recipe is. And then they just do it in different places. Oh, we're going to do it in a hotel or, oh, we're going to do it on the couch instead of the bed or, you know, they just like mix up the places. We'll spice it up and do it in the kitchen. Yeah, sure. <sighs> But like, I don't really have those options. So I got to get real creative. And luckily again, I've got a f fucking phenomenal partner who's just super cool and super open to, um, we just like ex explore, um, and try yeah. to find what we like the best. And, and that's, that's really special because, uh, there's a lot of trust involved and anyone who's been in love and been in a romantic relationship, trust is very, very, very important. Yeah. And communication is very, very, very important. So the fact that um, we can communicate really well and the fact that we trust each other really well is like, it's awesome. Do you think a lot of uh, people with disabilities are like, especially people who are limited in dexterity and limited in function and stuff like that, like physically, do you think a lot of them are sexually frustrated or like, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that's kind of a dumb question because, yeah. Well, there's some people that can't even, like, masturbate on their own. Yeah. It's true. I mean, there's some people that, like, for they sure. They can't even get no if they want to. Yeah, they can't finish at all. They couldn't get up on their own. There's some people that just kind of give up. There's some people that are, I mean, I'm fortunate enough, lucky enough that I created myself into a person who was attractive enough to be in a relationship. And I don't just mean physically attractive. I just mean, like, a well-rounded human being. Someone who would, another person is like, oh, this person is a person that I would want to spend time around regardless of um, he's in a wheelchair regardless of sexual or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there, yeah, there's I mean, shit, I want to be friends with you, you know, cool. You know, and I think <laughs> <laughs> cool. I want to be friends with you too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then, you know, I think about, you know, like there's, um, there's both guys and girls that are kind of like involuntarily celibate, I guess. Um, there, yeah. there are in cells, if you will. Yeah. So they're like butters <laughs> like butters. Um, and then there's that, I mean, that's a huge, that's a, pe that's a people big don't think people with disabilities are sexual, like they're sexual beings. Like I think about people that are like have congenital issues or people that were born or people that have, um, some type of degenerative disease or people that are just not seen as sexual objects anymore. Well, you talked about it. Your mind is your most sexual, is your biggest sex organ. Mm -hmm. you Absolutely. Know? But I mean it in the sense of like other people's perceptions, you know? Totally. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's like, you but other people are perceiving people with disabilities to not be sexual, but it's like, dude, they still got brains that work perfectly fine. You exactly. Know? Exactly. And I think, and they still got sex drive. They still like want to, you know, be intimate with somebody. Do you think it's like, you know, they, you talk about like the basic human needs. You've got like food, shelter, water, blah, blah, blah. Like where does sex fall into that? Like with, with everyone, I mean, like, you, is it something you, that you need? To if have you go human? down deep into the root of your brain, I mean, it's evolution. Procreation is evolution totally. and you know, you got to eat and, and have sex. That's literally it, you know, yeah. and, and a place to survive like shelter. So yeah. like in your reptilian of most reptilian spaces, I think sexuality is very, very important. When you first got injured, like obviously like being a newly injured spinal cord injury um messed me up so person much, dude. dude like i'm sure ruined that, my confidence i was yeah because you're like i don't even want to go talk to girls or anything because like what's the what's the point like i can't even like get it up like my shit mm -hmm. don't work like couldn't get it up couldn't finished i was i was on antidepressants i i hated my body i had major body dysmorphia i think before i even got hurt too i was bodybuilding at the time and you know i how i looked at myself in the mirror was not how other people looked at me and um i think did it ever manifest in eating disorders or anything or just being hyper crazy with your diet Nah, i had an eating disorder when i was younger like after my parents got divorced when i was like 9 10 or 11 i think really um, yeah it had i i wouldn't poop it was huh. it was weird i like restricted that so i just wouldn't eat what was it what, why did you think a control thing huh it meant if my life was so out of control the only thing i could control was my own bodily functions Weird. Yeah, so it manifested in, like, I just would, like, intentionally, like, not eat and then really constipate myself. It was very weird. Like, I would, I, like, and then my, my gut would, like, leak and, like, poop into my own self. And then, like, I was known for, like, pooping on myself. It, it, oh, wow. it was not it was not a good time in my life. Like I've mentioned many times before, very that interesting. Thing, human some things never change. <laughs> 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 Damn it, you're right. <laughs> I do, I do wonder what, what type of damage that did actually um, do, do to me. <laughs> do, do, do you? Do, do, uh, do, 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 do,
I mean, not funny. It, it's not funny, but it's funny looking back. You know, well, one thing I've seen that happens with the just in the disabled world is their sexuality um, evolves. Sometimes mm. they'll they'll. I think I think the big problem is when people are too picky because the truth is you can find another person in a wheelchair who's DTF. You can find like a heavier person. You can find a trans person. You can find a gay person. Like if you're trying That's to get true. if you're trying to get your nut, you can get your nut. Like you just That's lo- true. Lo- lower, lower your standards. <laughs> uh, that needs to go on a t-shirt. <laughs> you can get your nut. You just need to lower your standards. God damn. It's, That's true, man. That's it's so true. true. I, mean, I mean, you can go to a strip club. You can get a prostitute. There's a million million different reasons why i mean there's places in canada you, you might not know this where actually sex workers are like given to you by the government you get like one, i heard about that one or two prostitutes a month i forget who it is and it's like sanctioned by the government and it's more than just like they come and hump you like they actually like are very intimate with you and you get like huh. and you get like a huge there's like a there's like a it's a almost a proper relationship kind of it's like it's like our, our they're what, not really in it because they want to be there in it because they're getting paid. But at the end of the day, it is like an intimate relationship. And over time, like maybe you have the same person well, yeah, that comes and, over and all the, the time and they all see, that. They see it as a form, You're a regular. They see it as a form of like therapy because physical touch is also really important. I mean, and, it's like you think about like the emotion, really- emotions and, you know, the, the people who are like the prostitutes or the sex workers are probably polyamorous, meaning they can have many loves. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we we have a friend who's poly and and she has multiple boyfriends and it's like, I don't doubt it. I think it. about like porn stars too. They can have relationships. I mm-hmm. mean, sometimes it's unhealthy, but a lot of times, you know, they're in normal relationships. I mean, it, it's, it all kind of just boils down to like what you view as normal and what you're cool with and what you're accepting. And I think also like, with uh people with you know in that in that world it's like what's the relationship between you and your therapist it's like does your therapist care for you yeah would he like still spend hours of time with you if you weren't if he wasn't getting paid probably not no No. it's it's the same kind of deal it's like what's the relationship between it and there's nothing wrong with a relationship also having a money factor in it it just needs to be healthy you know and if and if i think it's a really great thing that canada does that i mean yeah i think i think uh really like the the biggest question that is like, you know, is it healthy? Is that person that's needing those things? Like, don't let it get, don't get it twisted. Like, don't get, don't fall in love with this person. And then like, get, you know, freak out when you're like, oh, I thought they really loved me. It's like, don't get it twisted. Like they're there because they're getting paid. But also at the same time, it doesn't mean they don't necessarily not care for you or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but I think kind of get get back to your original original question is like i sexuality is very fluid yeah in the sense that like and i'm also like this too dude i could i could give me enough time and i could make that roll of duct tape in the corner hot you know like i could get off on that duct tape like give me (laughs) give 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 me give me enough time give me enough time i don't know man if i'd look at it enough if i'd like tape it on me enough if i'd wrap it on me enough i'd like like the feeling of it unsticking on me seriously i could give me enough time i could get freaky enough that i would be sexually attracted to that that duct tape interesting but i mean in the sense of like this is why people are like you know on those weird tlc shows they're like i have sex with my car and you're like what the hell or the amusement ride people, the people that like all about, or like fences, they're into fences, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, it's, it's seriously, it's like, again, it's like, you got to remember that like, when you become disabled, your whole life's different and, totally. and you have to evolve, evolve with it. And, you know, you got to experiment and explore. I mean, I'll open about something that I know a lot of people know about, but there was a, there was a time where I was even like, hmm, maybe I'm gay. Like, I didn't know because like no straight women were paying attention to me at all i mean granted i was kind of in like a i was in a bad part of my life and i remember even like talking with some gay dudes and like hanging out with some gay dudes and like you know like spending some quality time with them and like and and just being like and then eventually i was like no no i'm not gay. like i'm not i'm not gay but like hey uh, at least you tried it at least you figured it out yeah and then you know and then um i think that's i think that's a testament to just like probably just how open you are and how like you know Cause I think a lot of guys are very, very, uh, I mean, I was lonely. Com- they're not comfortable. They're, they're like not, uh, confident in their sexuality. So they're always trying to prove how like straight they are or whatever. And well, it's like, dude, I'm confident enough to like be like 
flirty with you or like say some super like gay shit to you or something but i but we both know it's like super not like yeah you know i mean, I mean I, so at least you're you're com you're confident in in who you are and what you like and what you don't like now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and 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 it's it's one of those things that like uh i just had to explore my myself and my body and my mind or whatever and that's it's like, good um definitely straight and that's cool very and, good and i'm i don't have sex the way you have sex i've got my way of having sex but it's really pleasurable for everyone involved. And I think that's important. I think sexuality and sex is something that like ever, everyone should have a good time. Agreed. And I think you should wrap it just like we got to wrap up this podcast right now. Hey, <laughs> be sure to jump on iTunes and give us a five star <laughs> rating in review and actually legitimately tippity type it out. We're trying to get on the new and noteworthy page. If you are binging all these episodes, cause we're releasing a bunch at one time. If you haven't already, please, 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 please. We can't ask it enough. It, you know, you're, you're like, oh, someone else will do it. No, they won't fucking do it. I know for a fact. I've been podcasting for two and a half years. I had thousands and thousands and thousands can of I listens. Can I make a confession? You never did it. I never. I, I never starred or. Oh, I know. Or well, that's the most your... Richard. But that's the most Richard thing ever. <laughs> we are now gonna have bad review karma because of you, Richard. Um, then I've got bad ad karma too because got... only just now, after I got on YouTube, I was like, oh, I gotta turn off my ad blocker. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been running ad blockers since 1998. <laughs> like, I am a functioning adult and I pay for YouTube premium, but there's no such thing as YouTube premium for podcasts. So you just got to sit through that. But seriously, uh, new and noteworthy page. We're trying to get on it. It's going to help us a lot. We're trying to get um, a bunch of reviews and comments. I mean, if we could get to like a hundred in the first 24 hours, that'd be insane. If we can get to 500 in the first 24 hours, I think we could really knock it out of the park, get on the new and noteworthy section. Um, We're trying so, to have networks call us so we can tell them no. That's really what we're trying to do. Dude, you know, it'd be crazy if we made it on new and noteworthy and like iTunes reached out to us and was like, yo, your podcast is insane. Like, and the only way that's going to happen is if we get on new and noteworthy because you guys are rating your review. So go on Apple podcast, subscribe to the podcast, download and listen to all of our episodes. We're going to have like five or six at launch and then go and rate and review the podcast. You guys are amazing. Thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, anything else, Richard? Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you <laughs> in the next one. All right. See you guys. <laughs>